Hello and welcome back to Water Player Concussion Subseries, the bite-sized podcast where we take a break from the work, dive into the life of cricket. So this is Suman, as all of you know, we chat with people you think we know via social media platforms and about their cricketing journey. So today we have a very special guest, Nitesh. He runs a cricket blog and we will chat about it. And he's famously called Broken Cricket Dreams. Very excited and thrilled to have you, Nitesh. Welcome to our show. Thank you, Simon. Thanks for the nice introduction and uh, glad to be on here. Thanks for the invitation. Tell us a little bit about you, uh, because typically how we start is we learn about how somebody is associated with the game of cricket, because that's the core is. We would like to learn how you became a cricket fan and, of course, broken cricket dreams. So I'm assuming you wanted to be a cricket player. So tell us. Awesome. So just like uh, many Indian households, uh, cricket is huge. And I started watching cricket around the 2003 World Cup. Um, so the India-Australia series where Dravid scored the 233. Um, the India-Pakistan ODI series. Um, you know, that was fascinating. All players from both sides contributed to that. Um, so that's what got me into cricket. Uh, I was a small kid taking notes and memorizing all players' names from the very beginning. Uh, and then... We were in Mumbai for the last eight years that we were in India. Uh, and I was in the second to fourth grade cricket team. Uh, so number three batter, you know, for a nine to 10 year old, that was pretty good. And then uh, in our internal match, just like a internal school match, I got a player of the match award at the last game of the season, unofficially. And I was super happy. I thought I, I thought cricket could be the way to go. Uh, in the next season, the first game we had was in the, the Shivaji Park, Mumbai, where like 50 games happened at the same time. The edge of one boundary is the beginning of the other one. And I was not selected for that one. And basically, as a imagine a small nine-year-old who has two shots in the book, the forward defense and the straight drive. Um, and the player of the match that I had got was uh, I batted at number three, defended all the way, and we won by one wicket. Um, people said I made a 50, but I made eight not out. I can remember, and 42 of them were leg buys. So I just stayed not out. Was was my own only thing. So when the next season started, I wasn't selected for the first game because it was a limited overs game, and I had no shots in the book. Um, but they said I would play the second match, which is a two or three day match. It would open for that one if we won the eliminator in the first game. Well, as things turns out, we dropped a catch. It was a thriller. It was a great game to watch from the sidelines. Uh, the team was eliminated. Uh, wow. Then we moved to the United States and I've never played cricket or any competitive sport ever since. So wow. that's the broken dreams part of it. Um, and then uh, as your journey, I started uh, writing about cricket in 2020 during lo uh, lockdown and COVID. Um, it was the England West Indies test match. Um, the first game since the restart of cricket had happened. And when Jason Holder hit those final runs, Jermaine Blackwood, I think, on the final day, um, West Indies had a great chase, won the match, and that moment was like, this This is why we play sports. Uh, great stories came from that series, and I've always liked to write, especially the last four or five years before the lockdown, and that was the perfect timing to get started on cricket writing. What a story, what a story. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's fascinating to learn our dreams, how we grow up in India and where we end up, right? So mm -hmm. it's amazing. and. More about your blog, Broken Cricket Dreams. Of course, you know, there is a lot of content stats. So tell us a little bit, like, how did you create a website? And do you do this on your own? Or do you have friends? Or give us a little insight about what goes into creating the content on Broken Cricket Dreams. Well, at this point, I write, edit, and the website creation part is also mine. Uh, but in terms of ideas and things, a lot of ideas come through conversations in Twitter. Uh, my dad played cricket during his PhD. He was the captain of his PhD team. So he loves cricket and I love conversing with him about it. So lots of ideas come through conversation with him. My brother, uh, we played at the same time. He's three years older. He was, he's an all rounder and he was 
really good uh, athlete overall. Get to talk to him and get bounce ideas off of him. And then in undergrad, I had a friend from Australia who played, who still plays uh, great cricket in Australia. Uh, and at the end of our undergrad, we bounced about a lot of ideas of what can improve in the game, game of cricket what things exist. So we just had those philosophical late night conversations. That's how things started. In terms of how I create the blog, usually, uh, you know, there's lots of ideas that come about. Uh, and I, I started this at the end of my school journey. Um, so this would be writing in the evenings, editing in the night, doing social media on weekends and things like that. And now that I'm working, uh, same, can't do much during the day. Um, so once or twice a week, you know, pick up the laptop, try bouncing some ideas, and then mo mostly on weekends, try publishing one or two articles. Um, and uh, ideas range from different topics, uh, uh, yeah, and the name Broken Cricket Dreams one was the journey, right? And I'm pretty sure a lot of cricket fans around the world could re relate to that. So lots of content on the at the beginning of the journey was about life lessons, philosophies, what we can learn from the great cricketers, and sharing stories of uh, fans around the world. So that was one part of it. The other part was Broken Cricket. What things are broken in cricket? What things can we improve? suggestions on how to improve cricket we have started to look at stats uh, and things like that and the base of lots of things that are the cause of problems in cricket are financial and economic so i've started reading through financial documents different organizations and doing some of more in-depth research articles lately it's a good story for budding writers and folks who would want to get to the stage of writing a cricket story and things like that. So thanks for sharing. Uh, I've also stumbled across your 200th article, the five cricket lessons you learn from, which is quite fascinating. So would you mind just giving us a crash course about what those five lessons are? And again, what made you relate to cricket on some of the learnings you have? So it'll be useful to learn about them. Yeah, so, I mean, in, in general, cricket is a sport that we could learn from both individually and as a team sport, right? Uh, there's the one-on-one -on -one battle between the ba batters and the bowlers. So that's more of a mental game, staying in the game. But there's also the team aspect of it. Um, not only are you trying to prove yourself that you can win matches, that you are good enough to be at that stage. Even the little things like a like from today's India-Australia match, a run out can uh, change the entire game. A couple of year runs here and there could uh, uh, twist things up. So anything can happen. Um, um, so I ha have a musical background as well. I didn't play sports, um, but I uh, joined the orchestra here because uh, every school in fifth yeah. or sixth grade uh, encourages that. Um, and uh, so I have a musical background because of that, which is a blessing in disguise, right? Now things do not turn in what you plan for, but whatever happens, happens for a reason. Um, but the five lessons here. So starting with number one is Hakuna Matata from the famous Lion King. Uh, and this one, again, going back to the story of the England West Indies uh, first test match after COVID started. Um, the li life lesson here is if you have any idea, take that action, right? We always wanted uh, talked about cricket. People had bounced off ideas. Maybe I should start a blog. Maybe I shouldn't. And it was all in the head. But just taking that action, if you have an idea, what's the worst that could happen, right? Um, so it's always good to give your dream a shot. Um, do not just play scenarios in your head or think what others would think or how you would be judged from it. Take destiny in your own hands and just like Timon and Pumba, just live free and just give your dream a shot. Second one was uh, from Wizard of Oz. Uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow is one of the great classics of all time. Um, and again, going back to the idea of dreams, one quote in that 
somewhere over the rainbow is and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true just uh yeah always expect the unexpected life may not go according to your plan but uh i never expected to be writing on the subject that i like and now i am and the journey the process itself is really fun uh, figuring out the stories of other cricketers and how they got through it um and i'm just learning a lot in the process as well so don't have any regrets smile enjoy the journey and follow your passion john lennon imagine you may say i'm a dreamer but i'm not the only one right a lot of times i have in my bubble in my head that oh i couldn't do this didn't play but this is a familiar journey that most people go through right a lot of us dream to be different things and it's okay for those dreams and goals to change over time the song imagine has all lots of other implications as well like there are no boundaries in terms of world and we see in on on twitter there's uh lots of shouting sometimes fan wars and things like that so you know man has created boundaries and you know cricket or sports in general can unite the broken world uh and john lennon's uh, final line is i hope some day you will join us and the world will live as one it's beautiful amazing lyrics in in general yeah. right just beautiful uh, beautiful frank sinatra great voice and uh, one of his famous emotional songs is i did it my way when there was doubt i ate it up and spit it out i faced it all and i stood tall and i did it my way excellent <laughs> uh, there might not be one correct answer for everything right there's multiple ways um i chose to portray my love of writing or love of cricket through writing uh you choose to portray love of cricket through conversations and podcast which is amazing to watch um so there is no right or wrong answers everything is different just whatever you do give it your all um and do it your way be honest be yourself and things will come good finally uh this was more because i just love the song and less of a life lesson but uh time to say goodbye by sarah brightman and andrea bocelli andrea bocelli is a uh blind singer uh with uh great videos and great voice if you want to watch um it was more or less a thank you for people to engage and keep reading it was not for me to say goodbye i will still keep on writing conversing etc excellent awesome man i mean that's that's great that you put your thoughts together and especially you are marking the milestone of 200 article more power to you and my favorite frank sinatra is the new york song which happens mm-hmm. usually in the christmas time you know never gets old beautiful christmas uh, is beautiful here and yeah excellent good stuff so that was that was good uh, hopefully that gives inspiration to your know, budding writers or people who are willing to take a step but asking themselves a question should i which is great um mm-hmm. switching gears for the most recently concluded india versus australia women's game mm-hmm. which is quite unfortunate india are now in the waiting play of tomorrow's new zealand versus pakistan how do you summarize the indian women's cricket journey i think they are there but they are not there unfortunately and they always stumble upon these mighty aussies so but talk us through the journey of indians women cricket overall and then we can talk through about how do you think the t20 world cup is shaping up um the current state of women's cricket and indian cricket i would think is what men's cricket was in the early 2000s in odis australia were the main team that keeps winning um but there were lots of teams that comp- uh, that were competitive and the same thing is happening in women's cricket especially in t20s australia women's are by in terms of depth talent everything professionalism athleticism a step above the rest but indian women cricket uh, team is challenging getting gets close but not but doesn't win all the time south africa women's team as we saw in the finals in 2023 came close england is are always in the conversation new zealand might not be in the best form but they have world class talent the west indies so all of those five or six nations uh, and and 
not to discount Pakistan and Scotland who first time qualified and the Irish team have done well recently as well. Um, but to defeat Australia in its current state, the other teams need to put up their best performance. Like today, Australia were not at their best. They didn't start uh, as well. They had two injuries coming into the side. Uh, they were loose in the middle in the field as well. But they ended up winning. And uh, from all objective purposes, uh, India played well. You, you thought they were always in the chase. Renugar Thakur started well. He took wickets in the middle. The fielding was the only glaring difference, you could say. Um, but India played better than, let's say, what they did against New Zealand. Better than they usually do. And yet they couldn't close the gap. Australia, on their worst day, or one of the worst days, still were above the notch. So in order to defeat a team like Australia, each team has, like, the openers have to play well. The, uh, everything needs to go right to defeat Australia at this point in time. Which can happen in a pressure situation like a semi-final or a final. But in group stages, it usually doesn't get to that. Um, and again, going back to the New Zealand game, I think that hurt India a lot. Um, especially New Zealand were coming off a 10-match defeat. From that to lose by about 60 runs uh, is something that probably would have hurt India. Uh, psychologically, they still came back well uh, up their net under and are still in the conversation. Um, but the first game usually sets the tone. Um, my prediction for the World Cup was uh, for England to win, just to change things up a bit. Uh, <laughs> they have been coming off a 10-game win, um, and they've won the first three, I believe, this time. So yeah. they're, they're well, still there. Um, for all you know, they, they probably are like a dark horse, right? They're quietly plugging away. And I know Australia are on a law of averages. I don't know. You, you might be eventually right in calling England as, as potential champs. The, the one thing to be careful, they might, uh, even though they have won three games, the group is tight with West Indies and South Africa. All net run rates are pretty close. Yeah. So England might not even qualify. Oh, wow. <laughs> um if uh the last game uh goes against them so anything can happen at this stage because that group is so close uh, but if england goes through it would be a nice story they have lost against australia a few times in the finals excellent yeah i mean fascinating it's disappointing that you know india lost today's game they were they were nearly there i think the puja was tracker wicket Mm -hmm. was the and then that female age field i mean what a difference she's made to the game right, um, right. and that when sophie molino was bowling the 19th over we were chatting in our friends group that who will bowl the last over it'll boil down to that but guess what another player turns up annabel sutherland <laughs> and if you look at their aussie batting lineup which has been the case always they bat till number eight like every batter who gets out oh so now we are into the tail. No, Ellis Perry walks in. Now we are into the tail. Phoebe Litchfield walks in. And then Annabel Sutherland walks in. So it's crazy. I mean, their the bench trend and the professionalism is awesome. And hopefully India, you know, gets that lucky break tomorrow if if possible. But yeah, the next phase will be a little rough for India women cricket because I don't know if we have that much strong bench trend outside of the top five batters we have today. Right. If they have a strong succession plan, but uh, time will tell. Um, what do you make of all the IPL retention stories coming out through, firstly? And second, mm -hmm. IPL is good for cricket as a game? Uh, and secondly, uh, what about the overseas T20 leagues and West Indies cricket? I'm interested in three aspects. One, what do you think of the IPL retention dramas? Two, IPL for the sake of cricket. And three, overseas cricket leagues versus West Indies cricket. These are uh, very loaded questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, so IPL retentions, I haven't paid attention too closely. There have been some rule changes. Uh, number seven rule change, I think it's kind of meant for uh, the only to be uh, retained as a domestic uh, player. Um, overall, I think this could be a... Uh, I, I like the rules about... Uh, 
overseas players not trying to game the second season of an auction, right? Yeah. It would have happened uh, lots of times that the first season, if they don't get picked or they do not themselves go in the first auction, they go in the second or third auctions to uh, they because teams have a need for certain kind of players and prices can just balloon up. Um, and also about the withdrawals that we have seen in the last two or three years of players. Um, I think that those are good moves overall. Um, how they manage... Uh, I think some of the details are not clarified by the rules yet. Uh, what if some players actually have uh, family issues or things come up in the first season? Do they not put their name up uh, or do they put their name up but not get qualified? Um, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. But I am excited about uh, this year's auction. Um, I guess with uh, Gujarat winning the first version of uh last three years has kind of you know given a new team uh perspective Kolkata winning is nice and so now the stories of Chennai and Mumbai who were who dominated the 2010s where are they gonna go next yeah RCB is always in the conversations um are you an RCB fan uh the last three season yes uh, I followed Dinesh Karthik a lot so um uh, my hopes were on them the last few seasons. Dinesh Karting and Faf Duplessis. Uh, uh, all, all the other players in the RCB team, including Kohli, and are also good. Just wanted to clarify that. But uh, uh, it, it, I've switched teams in terms of players that I like. I liked RCB in the early stages uh, with Dravid, uh, Kumble, uh, Robin Utappa at the end. And... Uh, so I, I followed then the journeys of Robin Utappa. So I like KKR for a while. I like Dravid and Rahane and Double R. Um, and then in the middle, when uh, you know the first generation of players retired, um, I was with uh, you know the Sanju Samsons and Rishabh Pants and Delhi Daredevils, whereas Zahir Khan was in his last stages. And now I'm back to I was back to RCB with the uh, DK going or DK with KKR. So I followed them. And then with RCB um, next season, let's see how thing how the auctions and retentions work out. Um, in terms of IPL as a whole, um, overall it is good for cricket uh, because it uh, uh, provides economic support uh, not only to Indian cricketers but cricketers around the world. Um, just like specifically like in USA cricket and uh, cricketers from smaller nations that may not have thought about uh, even playing cricket professionally. Now they might not get selected in the IPL, but what the IPL has done has it has sprouted the smaller leagues in the UAE, maybe SA20, maybe the Major League Cricket, and those cricketers from associate nations get selected. Uh, are getting more selected more often. I would like the IPL to have a rule for a fifth optional fifth foreign player that could be an associate. Uh, kind of a debatable topic, um, but what night that could be an interesting uh, addition. But I think IPL overall is good for the sport. Has brought BCCI a lot of money, which they can reinvest in men's cricket, women's cricket, WPL starting. Uh, Ranji Trophy domestic. So Indian cricket is definitely prospering because of that. Um, but also indirectly, world cricket, economically, it prospers. Now, the proliferation of leagues and the IPL teams getting stakes into other domestic leagues. And uh, I know there's a, the Delhi Capitals group now just got a majority stake in uh, Hampshire, I think, in county cricket. So how that's going to play out in the next few years is going to be interesting because then all the decisions are being made by franchise owners in the IPL. Yeah. Uh, but then we also see like SA20 uh, prospering. That was a successful tournament and that brought in some money for struggling South African cricket. So that could help. Overkill of cricket is a real thing. You are now seeing, you know, there was a exponential curve of leagues rising and now some leagues are tailing off. The BBL is not as good as it used to be. 
uh, main reason their own cricketers uh, since they have both BBL and the test season at the same time Steve Smith doesn't play half the time right yeah um, so it's it's the standard of the league decreases if your own player doesn't then with the uh, the December leagues Bangladesh Premier League SA20 ILT20 all happening at the same time and the sources of cricket being the same players um the the reason things work in soccer is european football um there are multiple players that that are play at a high level so you can play concurrent leagues and a player just plays that one league throughout the season now cricketers have to choose and if there's more supply than demand something will have to give so i think in the future some leagues will start failing mm-hmm. uh whatever that means maybe a reduction in teams reduction in time uh maybe the icc should standardize that a player can only play a maximum of 3 leagues in a year or something some rules to cap that off now going to the the west indies they are in a better spot than they were in a few years ago during the transition period um always love uh, west indies cricketers in the 2010s they were kind of the backbone of t20 cricket prospering cpl has been enjoyable to watch uh i myself only watch when you know puran was playing well and puran's <laughs> on strike i open it up but other than that i've stopped watching a lot of the other leagues except for ipl or um if it's if i'm free and it's on tv um I, the current group of players uh could win them or at least bring west indies in the semi final conversations in the next few years and i think the cpl has helped the west indies cricket board and you see the crowds in guyana and trinidad they're always full um how that has impacted their odi cricket their test cricket i'm not so sure um uh, test cricket has always been on the decline for a few decades now um when uh, they they're fast the group of fast bowlers coming from the 29 the under 19 world cup a few years ago is pretty promising so i hope that the fast bowlers keep some of their test aspirations alive um but t20 is here to stay for the west indies interesting thoughts and speaking of west indies the caribbean cricket podcast to host mm-hmm. marshall and sundoki those two are good pals of mine so yeah i mean if you want to learn what exactly is the state of west indies cricket why and the deep lens those two dudes are doing phenomenal job on mm-hmm. on that coverage of cricket so it's interesting to hear uh, how and even if you look at new zealand cricketers they are starting to sway away from a a foreign contract over national contract which is fascinating to see likes of trent bowls and i think kane williamson is starting to think about it so it will be useful to see how 5 to 10 years from now how indian cricketers will look at it it sucks though that bcci doesn't allow any of the indian male cricketers to play another league what you know they let the women cricketers do that because it's probably a domestic cricket system for themselves so it's interesting mm-hmm. phase of the cricket right now i yeah, would would like that to be expanded I, 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 the main reason is to keep the ipl a monopoly right that it is the yeah. best competition but um and, and the, i think it will also depend how international cricket goes as a whole um i would like to see less bilaterals in t20 especially uh, unless there are qualifications for a world cup uh, but if you allow players in the off season to play in another league let's say uh, let's go back to the 2024 t20 world cup i know india won everything went well uh for indian fans um but there were, weren't many players who had cpl experience in those pitches right um so maybe a few seasons ago it would have been nice for if there are players who are not in the national contention they could go play the cpl when they're not playing any other cricket get that experience get back into the conversation uh in the national leagues um so we'll see if that happens that i guess that will only happen if 
T20 bilaterals will decrease so people have more options to showcase their talent. Yeah, interesting stuff. Excellent. We could go deeper and deeper. There's so much content on your website. So I'm sure, you know, we will chat again, but let's let's get some quiz running. Let's test you out. We will have six questions like, a, you know, six ball over. We shall see how you do. Uh, let me bring this up. Uh, getting nervous already <laughs> okay perfect so the first question who is the only cricketer to have featured in all the cricket world cups odi world cups between 1975 and 1996 okay so this is men's cricket because it's 75 men's cricket yeah um ooh. let's see let's see the number of teams in 75 weren't that many uh from india gavaskar didn't play all the way to 90 to the 90s west indies or england is what i'm thinking must be someone in england who didn't play as much in 75 but played in 96. let me give you a clue asian team asian team okay so that reduces the option. So Sri Lanka was in 79. They weren't in 75. That's out. Um, it's Pakistan and India. Imran Khan was in 75, went to 92. I think you ran out of the time. So it is Javed Miandad. Javed Miandad, okay. Yes, right. he played till 1996. And the famous quarterfinal in Bangalore, that was his last game. Nice, yes. 96, yeah. we can see that. Cool. So let's go to question two. Which two players have the most ducks in World Cup matches? Again, one day cricket we are talking about. So yeah, now Glenn McGrath just didn't bat as much. So Australia's batting strength meant that their team didn't, at least recently, their bowlers didn't bat much. Um, Let me give you a clue. These are top order batters. Top order batters. Okay. Are we t I'll, I'll take another clue here. Recent or not recent? Uh, these are like 2000s, 1990s and 2000s players. It's okay. So I think you again ran out of time. So let's give you that. Nathan Astle and Ijaz Ahmed. Those two are the players who had most. They are the joint record holders for having most ducks in one day cricket World Cups. How many are there? Uh, good question. I don't know how many. I'll find out. I'll find out. So, okay. Third question. Okay. 2007, most recent World Cup, 2007 T20 World Cup, India versus Pakistan bowl out. Who were the Indian bowlers who hit, strike or score? Remember the famous bowl out. So, the the Seva, Robin Utappa. There was one, two more. Well, they were batters. Uh, uh, yes. Ish. Yusuf Khan was in there at that point, the beginning of the tournament. Let's see, let's go, let's go to the lineup. Seva, Gumbi. <laughs> uh, it's in the it's in the batting. It's unfortunate the strikeout doesn't happen anymore, but it was fascinating. It was Seva, Arbajan, and Utapa. Yeah. Those okay. are the three. Yep. But you got the two right, Utapa and Seva. Uh, Okay, let's go to fourth question. Which batter scored four consecutive centuries in 2015 World Cup? Again, one day internationals. Shikhar had a good tournament, but I don't think he scored the consecutive centuries. Very stylish. Class act. Kumar Sangakara. That's it, Sangha. Sangha was the brilliant matsman he scored the four consecutive centuries and sri lanka unfortunately did not make all the way through though uh, that was a yeah great season he had in the last how many twitter followers does your account have this is about you Seven thousand one fifty or something that's great that's close enough <laughs> that was 7139 so that, 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 <laughs> yes on that note, as you can see, please uh, do follow Broken Cricket Dreams on Twitter. It was fantastic, Nitesh, to chat with you. Thank you for making time. I'm glad we could make this happen. We've been trying to connect with each other in the past couple of weekends, but I'm glad that we caught hold of you. 
uh, it was awesome to learn there's a lot of content out there i'm pretty sure that maybe in you know closer to christmas or new years we will do a round two to go through a little bit deeper about the cricket broker dreams but sure, we thank- thoroughly enjoyed thanks for participating and yeah i mean hopefully you inspire budding cricketers who are budding writers who are interested in writing thanks for joining in nitesh awesome thank you suman thanks for having me and yeah great conversation would like to do it again sometime excellent excellent and thanks for watching if you do like you know drop in the comment and like i said please follow broken cricket dreams until next time thanks very much and nitesh have a great one have a good one thank you